My name is Chris Kelly and I am the Chief Scientist at uh, CSA Ocean Sciences uh, for the Norie D Survey. Hey, I'm Frank Johnson with CSA Ocean Sciences and I'm uh, the Operations Manager for uh, this project. So the primary objective of, of this study is to look at the seasonality of water uh, conditions within the Norie D region. So what we do is we take samples at various times throughout the year as well as uh, collect uh, mooring data throughout the year. We, we put out three large moorings into the area that uh, will look at salinity, temperature, and other variable parameters. So what we want to do is before anything occurs within the block, before any mining occurs within the block, there has to be a full environmental impact assessment that occurs. And in order to inform that environmental impact assessment, we have to use the model and we have to use the data uh, collected to inform that model so that we can get a very good snapshot of, of what is in the area. So we can, if we can get a better handle on the conditions of the area, then you can better determine any of the potential impacts that occur from that. And uh, that's no easy feat, um, not at all. You know, the moorings are, the longest moorings are about 4,000 meters long, and uh, the other ones uh, are, are 500 meters and 32 meters, and they go really deep into the, uh, the ocean. First, we collect uh, water samples by use of a 24 position uh, water sampling carousel. So that carousel has 24 bottles on it, and we send it down to about 4,200 meters to the bottom of the ocean and collect water at 16 depths as we go down. It takes about two hours to get down and two hours to get back up, so it takes a while to, to do that. And once it's on deck, we collect that water. Uh, we send a lot of it to an analytical laboratory, but then we process some of it on board to figure out some nutrient concentrations as well as uh, total sediments within the water. We're also collecting a lot of the water quality parameters, CTD, DO, pH, redox. Uh, we're doing uh, currents, we're doing upward and downward looking currents. Uh, those are attached to the rosette as well, the carousel. So we're collecting a bunch of different data real time as in addition to the water samples that we'll get analyzed once they get processed and sent off the vessel. We've got some acoustic sensors on there that'll pick up. Uh, yeah, uh, any, any noise within the region, any, any mammals, any vessel Mammal traffic. Noise, yeah, vessel noise. On each of the moorings, we actually have sediment traps as well. And so those sediment traps will uh, capture, uh, give us an idea of uh, flux of particles from the surface going to sea floor. And that'll give us a good idea of the baseline flux within the region so that um, we can characterize that versus uh, any impacts from uh, mining activities. The other data that we collect, that'll actually be placed into a model. And that model will, uh, will show um, the subsea currents and the subsea flows and the subsea conditions over time and so what that'll do is it'll get a, a really good long-term record of, of what the conditions are within the region so that when Nori does start mining activities that they can have a good idea of what the conditions are there to fulfill their environmental assessment impact. We have to spool the cable onto a, onto a mooring winch. We'll start with the very highest moorings, the very highest uh, flotation and we'll add the sensors to each depth that they need to be collected and then we'll trail those buoys and the, and the sensors themselves behind the vessel as, as we add each additional piece on. As we add those on, it gets further and further behind. So at one point, we've actually got about 4,000 meters of cable dragging behind the vessel. When we go past the point that we want to, to uh, deploy it, we'll uh, actually take the railroad clump, the clump weight that, that holds everything to the, to the sea floor, um, and then we'll push it off. And as it goes in, it takes everything else with it. It's, it's the last thing to go in, it's the first thing to hit. Uh, so it'll hold everything in a nice straight string. And we've calculated and then modeled anything that could happen if we have, have bad currents, uh, any of that tilting that could go on. Uh, so we've uh, taken that into consideration with all the flotation that we've added. We wanna make sure that all those sensors are straight up in the water column at the most in a really bad current, no more than a 10 degree angle. There's challenges in being five days away from any near support, uh, so we've got to make sure that we've got every I dotted and every T crossed. So I think I think we uh, that's the challenge for us to make sure we've got everything. It, it's always gratifying. We had a, it was a huge team effort for us to come out here and put all this together. We had a team of seven, so there's a lot of people to make sure that this yeah. this went well. So for now, this part of the operation I think was was basically just about flawless. We've been planning for this area yeah, we've been, for yeah, about six I've been months working now. on this since April of yeah. 2019, and it's been almost my full-time job. So yeah. I think we've pretty much got every objective that we want wanted to meet. We, we fulfilled mm -hmm. that. Now all we have to do is make sure we get the data back. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That'll be the next survey. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, but we've yeah. done everything we can to make sure that that occurs. Yeah.